Hello, in this video I will go over how you can set up the Cocos 2D X version of the sample loader for Rube Box 2D editor scenes. Are we supposed to say this X or cross? I'm not sure, but I'm gonna say it X, so too bad if you don't like that. Uh, so I have downloaded the source code here and this contains no actual Cocos 2D source code itself, so you will have to get that from the Cocos 2D website and install the templates and what I'm going to be doing in this video is using Xcode to set things up and run on iOS. Uh, I think the idea is with Cocos 2D X is that it should be able to run fairly easily on other platforms as well but at this stage I haven't checked any other platforms myself so uh, this is only tested on Xcode just keep that in mind. So I'll unzip this and we have in here some setup notes which is basically what I'm just about to show you and also in here we have the source code obviously so what we're going to do is use the Cocos 2D X template for Xcode to create a project and then we need to replace the box 2D source code to get a the newest version and then we're going to drop these files in there and compile the project one little change we need to do after that. Anyway, uh, so let's get on with that. Create a new Xcode project and from the Cocos 2D X category select the Box 2D template, click Next and give it a cool name like Rubex and I'm going to save that here with this in the same folder any day now. Oh, okay. It takes a while to create a template, create a project from a template, doesn't it? Alright, so first things first, we're going to find the Box2D group there and we're just going to get rid of that. And then also on disk, we will come into the source code folders for the project that we just made and we'll find the Box2D folder in here and we will get rid of that. Now we need to replace that with the newest version and the easiest way to do that is to use terminal to run a subversion and check out the source code directly from the repository. And you can find the command line that you need to do that in the setup notes. And it's this one here, svn checkout. So I'm just going to copy that and in terminal I'm going to cd into this folder that I've been doing everything in and run that command and then we'll see when it does what it's going to do we'll see we have a folder here called box2d read only so that's the hot off the press version of box2d and we need to go into that folder and find the folder that contains the box2d.h file, this one here, and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to bring that into my source code tree for my project under the libs folder and replace the one that we deleted and then also replace that in the project, so I'm going to drag that into Xcode and this should be added as create groups and that's that now we need to add all of the rube stuff so that is uh, from the download rube uh, source code download I'm just going to copy everything from the source folder there and I'm going to bring that into my Xcode project and I'm going to paste it in here alongside the resources folder so that when I do that it will ask me if I want to merge the new uh, resources that I'm pasting with the old ones which I do so I click merge here and now we need to add those things that we just pasted in here into the Xcode project so 
we can do that by clicking in right clicking in here and selecting add files to the project and when you <coughs> come into this dialog you'll see files that are already in the project will be in gray and the new ones that we have not yet added are in black so that's a handy way to tell them apart so we just need to select all of the source code files that we just pasted in and we also need the rube stuff folder because that contains the actual um, files for passing the JSON from the scene so we add that and back into the uh, finder window again inside the resources folder we need to add all the resources that we're going to use to load these scenes so the main ones are the JSON files which are the scenes themselves so that's every JSON file in the resources folder and also the sounds folder which contains some WAV files and we're going to throw that into our project like this and OK that and the last thing we need to add is the images folder and I'm going to also throw that into the resources subgroup and this one is a little bit different when we are looking at this dialog we need to choose create folder references instead of groups and the reason we need to do that is because we want to preserve inside the iOS app bundle when it's built we need to have this folder um, path preserved when we're trying to find these images uh, if you don't do that it just throws all the images together in one big folder at the root of the bundle which is a bit inconvenient um, so just make sure that after you add images you have a blue folder here instead of a yellow one okay uh, just about there the last thing we need to do is find the hello world scene there should be two files here for the hello world scene and this is the main scene that the template sets up to use um, as the opening screen when you start the app uh, but we don't want to use that one so we get rid of that and we want to replace it with this one here called examples menu layer and the place where we tell the program which is going to be the first layer to use is in appdelegate.cpp so we just come into appdelegate.cpp and there's a couple of places that use this hello world scene and we're going to replace them with examples menu layer at the include header area and then also down here there's one more place where it was using hello world so we replace that as well and that should be it if we've got everything right so I'm just gonna try and run that, oh wait a minute sorry I want to run this on <coughs> iPhone not iPad okay run um, I'll just watch this compiling for something to look at while we're waiting it's kind of neat how um, you can see down the bottom here the grey ones are the ones that are being compiled and the green ones are the ones that are finished and you can see because this computer has two CPUs the, there's two grey ones at the bottom it's kind of neat uh, it's automatically using all the CPUs you have any minute now Oh, it's all green so far, that's promising. Okay, that looks good. And in the background, I see the simulator starting. Okay, so um, that's good, seems to have worked. And we can check that we have. Wow, it's really slow for some reason um, 
it could be because I'm viewing my Mac over the wireless network using VNC from my Linux box so um, I check this on the device of course it's not slow but um, not sure why it's so slow here anyway images seem to be loading okay um, yep everything seems to be running okay so as far as the actual contents of this demo project uh, I'm not going to cover any of that here you can check the video that I uploaded a few days ago specifically on these last two menu items here the menu items and the UI menu and UI controls demos um, <laughs> uh, so I'll put a link in the description where you can watch that video if you want to know more about using those so that's uh, all I was going to do for this video and hopefully that will help somebody out there and I'll see you again later. Bye.